Okay, good evening. Uh, today we will start a new chapter uh, that is organisms and population. We all know a single organisms cannot live alone. So they have to build some relationship between the organism and particular environment. So we will be seeing about that in this chapter. Okay, what is ecology? So ecology is a study of interaction among organisms and between organisms and its physical environment. So when a particular organism lives in a place, so the relationship between that place and the organism refers to ecology and it consists of two branches. One is orticology and another is syncology. Orticology means study of ecology at the level of species and then syncology means study of ecology at the level of communities. And uh, ecology is basically divided into four levels of organization. The first one is organism, population, biome and uh, communities. Okay, what is biome? Biome. Okay, it is a kind of a area which is classified according to the species that live in the location. Okay. We will see what is an environment is all about. It is, an, it is termed as the sum of total of all external conditions, biotic and abiotic. What is biotic and abiotic? Biotic is living organisms. Abiotic means non-living like water, temperature, pressure, all these kinds. Which influences the organisms in the term of survival and reproduction. Regional and local variations within each biome lead to the formation of a wide variety of habitats. Biome is nothing but an area in which the particular species has been classified. And the habitat of an organism is completely characterized by two components or factors that is abiotic and biotic factors. Okay, these are the examples for biotic and abiotic. As I said, biotic means living organisms uh, include fungi, plants, protists, animals, archaea and also bacteria. Whereas in the case of abiotic, it is kind of a non-living thing which includes air, salinity. What is salinity? Salinity. Yes, salt water, extreme salt content and then soil, temperature, light, water, minerals, pH and humidity. Okay, we will see how these organisms that is the biotic factors respond to abiotic factors. As I mentioned earlier, abiotic factor is nothing but examples temperature, pressure, pH. So, we will see how these biotic factors like fungi, bacteria reacting to these changes that is abiotic factors okay we will see the first one is regulator some animals have a cap capacity to maintain a homeostasis what is homeostasis homeostasis the animal which maintain their body temperature and osmotic concentration is referred to as homeostasis so that is physiological and sometimes behavioral means physiological means what is physiological which is happening into the body, inside the body. But whereas behavioral, it is a behaving uh, thing. All birds, mammals, few lower vertebrates and invertebrates are endotherms. What is endotherms? Sorry, endotherms. Oh. Okay, endotherms means warm-blooded animals. Okay, we call warm-blooded animals as endotherms. As they have the mechanism of thermoregulation and osmoregulation for maintaining the homeostasis. Thermoregulation means body temperature whereas osmoregulation means osmotic concentration in the body. Okay, next is confirm. What is confirm? The animals which does not fall under this endoderm categories. Endoderm falls, uh, I mean the animals which does not fall on the endoderm categories falls on confirm and they refer to as ectoderm. Ectoderm means cold blooded animals they cannot maintain their body temperature we will see. About 99 percentage of animals and almost all plants cannot maintain a constant internal environment. Their body temperature changes within the ambient temperature. Ambient temperature means the place where they are present. Okay, The body changes according to that temperature only in spite of 
what the body has it that is ectoderms a majority of aquatic animals change the osmotic concentration of the body fluids according to the environment such animals are plants are called as osmoconformers okay conformer means and ectoderms they don't maintain their body temperature but what is homeostasis it is maintaining the body temperature as well as the osmotic concentration in some cases what happens these uh, some some animals maintain only osmotic concentration so they are known as osmoconformers okay and during the course of evolution some species have evolved the ability to regulate their environmental condition but over a limited range beyond which they simply conform such animals are called as partial regulators okay next we'll see the next is migrate okay migrate if uh, the habitat becomes stressful to the particular organisms where they live the animals used to shift their home for a temporary time that is migrate if any organisms move away temporarily from a stressful habit to more hospitable area what is hospitable area the area the animals which feels comfortable that is hospitable uh, area and return when the stressful period is over and the process is called as migrations bird undertake long distance migrations during winters and the next is suspend the organisms which cannot migrate which cannot move so in that case these animals will go for a escape time so that is known as suspend we'll see some organisms are able unable to migrate so they might avoid the stress by escaping in time these organisms spend their metabolic functions during the stressful period and resume their function functions at the return of favorable conditions and for example bear undergoes winter sleep called as hibernation and animals like snails and fishes undergo estivations called as summer sleep for summer ipo vandu fish la vandu enna varuka romba summer irukanal they cannot survive so adha vandu escape pandradhukaga enna pandranga they are sleeping and that term uh, that condition is known as estivation okay next let us see what is adaptation adaptation appadina enadhu what is adaptation ipo na indha class la indha irukka appadina nee adapt panikira indha oru pudhu environment ku ena nee indha pudha pudusa vandanaala you feel comfortable adhu da vandu adaptation adapting to oneself in a new environment to ensure the survival okay next zero fights zero fights appadina plants can plants or organisms which can survive in extreme water uh, reduction xerophytes are plants that have adaptations to reduce water loss or to conserve water and they occupy habitats in which there is a some kind of water stress examples of such water stress habitats include desert desert la vandu water kedaikuma easy ah kedaikada so water extreme water vandu irukadu and high altitude and high latitude low precipitation or water locked up as a snow or ice and aduthu vandu rapid drainage that is sand dunes examples for xerophytes are all type of cactus okay next is halophytes halophytes abdina halophytes abdina what is halophytes extreme salt content the halophytes we'll say that is saline mangroves are halophytes adapted to grow in saline intertidal environments where they form some part of some of the most complex and productive ecosystem on earth mangrove adaptations include ability to secrete salt and accumulate it in a older leaves appa enna pandranga accumulate enna da water la salt kan adhigama irundhalume vandu they are accumulating in the leaves of the plant and specialized tissues that allows water but not salt to enter the roots and tissue tolerance for high salt levels appo indha mari trees plants ke la enna iruka high tolerance level of salt iruke and then extensive root system gives support in soft substrates oxygen enters the root through nematophores nematophores appadina enadhu enge irupanga indha nematophores yes very good yes good okay next adaptation und hydrophytes name itself tells hydro bina extreme water la iruka survive agirudhu hydrophytes are plants that have adapted to living either partially or fully submerged submerged appadina mulugirudhu onnu partially paadi mele paadi keela irupanga appadi illana full ave kuda ulla irupanga and typical features of these include uh, 
okay sorry water lily example enna na features appadina large thin floating leaves elongated petioles reduced root system aerial flowers yeah reduced root system nariya thanni irukku la அதுவுமே வந்து நமக்கு நல்லது பிளான்ஸ்க்கு வந்து நல்லது கிடையாது எக்ஸ்ட் நிறைய எது இருந்தாலுமே அண்ட் தென் ஏரியல் ஃபிளாஸ் அண்ட் ஏரியல் ஃபிளாஸ் அப்படின்னா ஏரியல் என்னது ஏரியல் ஃபிளாஸ்னா மேலே தான் போகும் கீழே தண்ணிக்குள்ளார பூக்காது ஓகே அண்ட் தென் லிட்டில் ஆர் நோ வேக்சிக்யூட்டிக்கல் புவர் டெவலப் ஜைலம் டிஷ்யூஸ் ஏன் புவர் ஜைலம் டிஷ்யூஸ் ஜைலம் என்ன பண்ணுது ஏற்கனவே வாட்டர் நிறைய இருக்கு அப்ப அதுக்குன்னு தனி சிஸ்டம் எல்லாம் தேவைப்படாது அண்ட் லிட்டில் ஆர் நோ லிக்னன் இன் வேஸ்டர் டிஷ்யூஸ் அண்ட் ஃபியூ ஃபியூ ஸ்கிளீராய்ட்ஸ் ஆர் ஃபைபர்ஸ் ஓகே நெக்ஸ்ட் இஸ் த அடாப்டேஷன் இன் அனிமல்ஸ் எக்ஸாம்பிள் வந்து டெசர்ட் கேங்குரூ ரேக்ஸ் அப்படின்னு சொல்றான் கேங்குரூ அப்படின்னு நினைச்சிட்டு நம்ம அந்த கேங்குரூ நினைக்க வேண்டாம் இதுக்கு ஏன் கேங்குரூ அப்படின்னு பேர் வந்துச்சுன்னா கேங்குரூ வந்து எப்படி ஹாப் பண்ணும் இந்த சேம் மேனர் ஆல்சோ தீஸ் ரேட்ஸ் யூஸ் டு ஹாப் ஜம்ப் அதே மேனர்ல ஜம்ப் பண்றதால வி கால் இட் ஆஸ் டெசர்ட் கேங்குரூ ஹேட்ஸ் அண்ட் தே ஆர் வெரி வெரி வெல் அடாப்ட் டு டெசர்ட் லைஃப் தே ஹேவ் லைட் கலர்ட் அண்ட் டென்ஸ் ஃபர் விச் ப்ரொடெக்ட் தெம் ஃப்ரம் ஹீட் ஆஃப் த சன் அண்ட் தே ஈட் சீட்ஸ் அண்ட் ரைட் பிளான்ட் மேட்டர் அண்ட் கேன் ஸ்டோர் திஸ் ஃபுட் ஃபார் வீக்ஸ் அட் அ டைம் இப்போ எப்படி வந்து கேமல்ஸ் எல்லாம் வந்து ரொம்ப ரேர் தானே தண்ணி குடிக்கும் அந்த தண்ணி குடிச்சாலுமே அதை வந்து கன்சர்வ் பண்ணி வச்சுக்கோம் ஸோ அதே மெக்கானிசம் தான் இந்த கேங்குரூ ரேட்ஸ்லையுமே இருக்கு அண்ட் இஃப் நீடட் தே கேன் கெட் தே ஆர் நீடட் மாய்ச்சர் ஃப்ரம் சீட்ஸ் தே ஈட் டெசர்ட் கேங்குரூஸ் டசன் ஸ்வெட் இன் ஆர்டர் டு கன்சர்வ் மாய்ச்சர் அண்ட் ஹாவ் அ வெரைட்டி ஆஃப் அதர் அடாப்டேஷன்ஸ் டு ஹெல்ப் டு ஹெல்ப் தெம் சர்வைவ் இன் த டெசர்ட் and the kangaroo hat has very uh, rat has very large back feet which helps it jump in the deep desert sand and the next adaptation in adaptation in mammals adha edha vechi idu paniranga appadina allen's rule appadina oru rule kondu vandiranga enna rule appadina in the colder climates in the slow antarctic and the discovery la nee paatha appadina antarctic la iruka regions la iruka organisms oda kai kal la avlo neelama la irukadu romba short ah da irukku nee paathirka penguins கால் எவ்வளோ இதுவாக இருக்கு ஏன் அப்படின்னா ஹீட் லாஸை வந்து ரெடியூஸ் பண்ணுறதுக்காக ஏன்னா அவங்க ஏற்கனவே கோல்டில் இருக்காங்க அப்போ ஹீட் இது ஆகிட்டே இருந்துச்சு அப்படின்னா தே கேனாட் சர்வைவ் ஷிவர் ஆகி தேல் டை ஸோ அதுக்காக வீல் சி அனிமல்ஸ் இன் கோல்டர் கிளைமேட்ஸ் ஹாவ் அ மினிமம் ஆஃப் எக்ஸ்போஸ் சர்ஃபேஸ் ஏரியா தட் இஸ் ஷார்ட் லெக்ஸ் ஷார்ட் டெயில்ஸ் அண்ட் ஷார்ட் இயர்ஸ் ஏன் அப்படின்னா அனிமல் லாஸ் ஹீட் த்ரூ எக்ஸ்போஸ் சர்ஃபேஸ் இஸ் கால்ட் அஸ் தேர்மல் விண்டோஸ் எக்ஸாம்பிள்ஸ் வந்து பிளாக் டெயில் ஜாக் ராபிட் dry uh, which is present in hot dry climate and then grey fox arctic fox cold climate la arctic hare penguins idella okay next adaptations at high altitude in humans at high altitude places like rotang pass near manali ipo nam romba height and like mountains la romba mele yera yera namakku vandu mooch eduka mooch vida mudiyadu ஏன் அப்படின்னா அங்கே ஆக்சிஜன் வந்து ரொம்ப கம்மியாக இருக்கும் ஸோ மேலே போக போக நீ ஆக்சிஜன் நம்ம ப்ரீத் பண்ண முடியல அப்படின்னா பேல்பிட்டேஷன் ஆயிரும் பேல்பிட்டேஷன் அப்படின்னா ஹார்ட் படப்படன்னு இருக்குமா அந்த டப்படப்படம் அடிக்கிறது நமக்கு தெரியும் அதான் வந்து ஹார்ட் பேல்பிட்டேஷன் ஸோ நம்ம ஹை ஹார்ட்டியூடில் போக போக வி கேன் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் திஸ் வில் சி அண்ட் மன்சர் ஓவர் பீப்புள் சஃபர் ஃப்ரம் ஆல்டிடியூட் சிக்னஸ் த காமன் சிம்டம்ஸ் இன்க்ளூட் நாசியா ஃபெட்டிக் நாசியா அப்படின்னா சென்சேஷன் ஆஃப் வாமிட்டிங் ஓகே வாமிட் வரல சென்சேஷன் தான் ஃபெட்டிக் tired okay and heart palpitation pada pada nadikirathu and this is because of the low atmospheric pressure and the body copes up with this low oxygen stress by eppadi nam body idaakudhu increase in rbc's production appo da vandu oxygen vandu nammala innum idu panna mudiyum and then decreasing the binding affinity of hemoglobin y enna nadakkudhu idhula ட்ரான்ஸ்போர்ட் ஆஃப் ஆக்சிஜன் நம்ம என்ன பார்த்தோம் ஒரு ஆக்ஸ் நாலு ஆக்சிஜன் ஒரு ஹீமோகுளோபனில் போயிட்டு பைண்ட் ஆகுது ஸோ அது அப்படி ஆகிட்டே இருந்துச்சுன்னா நமக்கு வந்து ஆக்சிஜன் சப்ளை வந்து கம்மியாகிடும் ஸோ அது வந்து என்ன ஆகுது கம்மியாகிடுது அண்ட் தென் இன்க்ரீசிங் த ப்ரீதிங் ரேட் ஓகே நெக்ஸ்ட் வில் சி அபவுட் பாப்புலேஷன் வாட் இஸ் பாப்புலேஷன் group of individuals in a particular area we call it as population seriya so, yeah, population is a set of individuals of particular species are found in a particular geographical area and can interbreed the population that occupies a very small area and is smaller in size called as local population a group of so, such closely related local population is called as metapopulation and population ecology is an important 
area of ecology because it links ecology to population genetics and evolution seri we'll see some attributes of population population nu eppadi vechi namm vandu kandupidikirom appdin paapom first vandu natality or birth rate ipo or area la vandu evlo birth aagranga nu vandu we can calculate and the birth rate evlo percent birth aagranga divide by the total population in the current area that we can find birth rate adhe dhaan death rate or mortality appo or location la illa or area la vandu evlo amount of sorry evlo uh, number of death occur agudhu divided by the total number of the population we can find death rate uh, population density appadina number of individuals of a population present per unit area is referred to as population density and sex ratio appadina number of females and males present in the area or per 1000 individuals அடுத்து வந்து ஏஜ் பிரமிட்ஸ் இந்த ஏஜ் பிரமிட்ஸ் என்ன அப்படின்னா கிராஃபிக்கல் ரெப்ரஸன்டேஷன் தான் இந்த ஏஜ் பிரமிட்ஸ் எதுக்கு யூஸ் ஆகுறாங்க அப்படின்னா எந்த எந்த ஏஜில் பேப்பிள் வந்து எவ்வளோ பேர் இருக்கிறாங்கன்னு அதை வந்து இது பண்ணுறதா வந்து இந்த ஏஜ் பிரமிடோட ஒர்க் அண்ட் தீஸ் ஆர் ஆஃப் த்ரீ டைப்ஸ் ஒன் இஸ் எக்ஸ்பேண்டிங் ஸ்டேபிள் அண்ட் டிக்ளைண்டிங் இஃப் த ஏஜ் பிரமிட் டினோட்ஸ் எக்ஸ்பேண்டிங் மீன்ஸ் தேர் இஸ் மோ க்ரோத் இன் பர்த் லெஸ் டெத் அப்போ தானே இப்போ எக்ஸ்பேண்ட் ஆகும் க்ரோத்து இதே வந்து ஸ்டேபிள் அப்படின்னா போத் ஆஃப் போத் ஆஃப் தேம் ஆர் ஈக்குவல் ஸ்டே பர்த் ரேட் ப்ளஸ் டெத் ரேட் இஸ் ஈக்குவல் வேர் இஸ் இஸ் டிக்ளைனிங் அப்படின்னா லெஸ் பர்த் மோர் டெத் ஓகே அண்ட் த நெக்ஸ்ட் இஸ் பாப்புலேஷன் க்ரோத் இட் இஸ் அ சேஞ்ச் இன் அ பாப்புலேஷன் ஓவர் டைம் அண்ட் கேன் பி குவான்டிஃபைட் அஸ் அ சேஞ்ச் இன் த நம்பர் ஆஃப் இண்டிவிஜுவல் of any species in a population using per unit time for measurement population growth appadina enadhu nama census edukkaradhu ipo or year lende innor year ku compare pannaila evlo population increase aayirukku so that denotes the population growth in demo, uh, demographics population growth rate is a rate at which the number of individuals in a population increases in a given time as a fraction of the initial population a compare panna sonnadhu okay we will see what are the factors affecting population the first one will be birth and death rate so and the next one will be immigration and emigration what is immigration and emigration immigration anadhu okay appo namba country la irundhu vera country ku poradhu vandu sorry namba country la irundhu vera country ku poradhu emigration இன்னொரு கண்ட்ரில நம்ம கண்ட்ரிக்கு வரணும் வந்து இமிகிரேஷன் ஓகே அப்போ பாப்புலேஷன் சேஞ்ச் இஸ் ஈக்குவல்ஸ் டு பர்த்ஸ் பிளஸ் இமிகிரேஷன் தான் வந்து வில் இன்க்ரீஸ் த பாப்புலேஷன் க்ரோத் பட் வேர் எஸ் டெத் அண்ட் எமிகிரேஷன் வந்து என்ன பண்ணுது டிக்ரீஸ் பண்ணுது ஒரு ஏரியாவோட பாப்புலேஷனை ஓகே அடுத்து வில் சி அபவுட் பாப்புலேஷன் க்ரோத் இந்த பாப்புலேஷன் க்ரோத்தை வந்து ரெண்டு கிராஃப் மூலமா வி ஆர் எக்ஸ்பிளைனிங் ஃபஸ்ட் ஒன் வந்து எக்ஸ்போன்ஷியல் க்ரோத் இன்னொன்று வந்து லாஜஸ்டிக் க்ரோத் இந்த எக்ஸ்போன்ஷியல் க்ரோத் வந்து எப்போ நடக்குது அப்படின்னா வந்து ரிசோர்ஸஸ் ஆர் அன்லிமிட்டட் ரிசோர்ஸஸ் அப்படின்னா ஃபுட்டு இப்போ ஒரு பர்டிகுலர் ஸ்பீஷிஸ் ஒரு இடம் இருக்கு ஒரு ஒரு கம்யூனிட்டி இருக்குது அதில் வந்து நிறைய ஸ்பீஷிஸாக இருக்காங்க அப்போது எப்போ இந்த பாப்புலேஷன் க்ரோத்தில் எக்ஸ்போன்ஷியல் க்ரோத் எப்போ நடக்குதுன்னா அங்கே வந்து சோர்ஸஸ் வந்து அன்லிமிட்டடாக இருக்கணும் ஃபுட்டு வந்து அவங்களுக்கு அன்லிமிட்டடாக இருந்துச்சு அப்படின்னா திஸ் எக்ஸ்போன்ஷியல் க்ரோத் ஹேப்பன்ஸ் சரியா இது வந்து திஸ் வாஸ் டெவலப்ட் பை டார்வின் பை யூசிங் த தியரி ஆஃப் நேச்சுரல் செலக்ஷன் இதோட ஃபார்முலா என்ன அப்படின்னா லெட் மீ ரைட் ஓகே இட் இஸ் டினோட்டட் பை dn by dt which is equals to b minus d into n okay what is n n enna varuk n da vandu population size seriya b vandu birth rate and d vandu death rate uh, okay and enna solranga na birth rate minus death rate vandu we are calculating as r r appadina it is intrinsic rate of natural increase that is birth rate minus death rate and where is t vandu it is time period okay so ipo enna nadadala po dn by dt is equals to rn for exponential growth idu enna graph appadina it is a j shaped graph see you can see a j shaped graph when this happens only when the resources are unlimited and there is no competition between various species okay and the idoda integral formula enna appadina it is uh, nt is equals to n not e to the power rt where nt vandu population density at t where n not is a initial population density 
E is the uh, base of natural logarithms and uh, where R is a intrinsic rate of natural increase. Okay, and the next uh, growth is logistic growth. Uh, the another name for this logistic growth is Verhulst Pearl Logistic. And uh, this happens only when there is limited amount of resources. So, when the food is very limited, what happens? There is a competition between two organisms. They fight for survival and reproduction. So, this happens only when the sources is limited. And this happens only the sources is unlimited. If the source is limited, the organisms they will fight for what? Survival for food, like also for reproduction. And here is a S shaped curve has been obtained and uh, the formula for this is dn by dt is equals to rn into k minus n by k where r we know it is a intrinsic rate of natural uh, increase and k is a carrying capacity in the carrying capacity I mean, what is carrying capacity any idea carrying capacity Okay. If you have a room, you can see room you can see 100 pairs, you can see 100 pairs, you can carrying capacity. If you have 101, you can see extra or rent pairs. That's the capacity of the carrying capacity. Then, carrying capacity is done. We will obtain this S uh, sigmoid curve. Okay. Chari, next, we will see. Life history variations. The rate of breeding varies from species to species. And some species breed only once in their lifetime and whereas while some breed many times in their life. And some organisms produce a large number of small sized offsprings whereas others produce a small number of large sized offsprings. So, according to ecologists, life history traits of organisms have evolved in relation to the constraints imposed by biotic and abiotic of habitats in which they live. Okay, we will see some popular interactions. Uh, interspecific interactions occur between populations of two different species living together within a community that these interactions could be beneficial, detrimental or neutral. Beneficial abdina, which is useful, detrimental abdina, which is harmful, neutral abdina, no use of them. The first one is predation. Predation abdina, what is predation? One organism kills and consumes the prey. the predator it is winning and the prey is losing. Okay. Ipo, in the absence of predators, what happens if a predator is like uh, predator illa abdina, prey on the prey species on the which makes the ecosystem stable. Adu. Ipo romba predation narandalume, prey species irkadu. Apadume on the unstable. Apadume stable arka. So in a solo varana predation on the equal arkno. Every amount of uh, predators when the prey is sampling, lo, that kind of prey is evolved right we can balance this ecosystem. We'll see. For in the absence of predators, prey prey species could achieve very high population densities and causes instability. The help in the maintaining species diversity in a community by reducing the intensity of competition among competing prey species and when certain exotic species are introduced into a geographic area they become invasive and start, sorry, and start spreading fast because the invaded land does not have natural predators. Um, and the next is commensalism. What is commensalism? Any idea commensalism? In commensalism, one organism used to get benefited and other is neutral. It doesn't get benefited nor harm, harmful. It is an interaction between two species where one species is benefited and another is neither harmed nor benefited. Some examples uh, include orchard growing in a mango tree get shelter and nutrition from mango tree while the mango tree is neither benefited or harmed. Orchard means kind of a small plant which grows in the mango tree. Upon the orchard it is uh, getting shelter from the mango tree but the mango tree is in the use mail. So, that is the benefit of the one that is the value of neutral uh, harm or benefit. Second, the barnacles growing on the back of the whale 
which are benefited by getting moved into different locations for food as well as shelter while the whale is neither benefited nor harmed barnacles abina kutti kutti kind of shellfish madri okay and the next is amensalism amensalism is apde vand opposite oru organisms vand harm harm a irukum innoru organism vand benefit um illa harm um illa example it is an interaction between different species in which one species is harmed and the other is neither benefited nor harmed example penicillium a mold secretes penicillin penicillin which kills bacteria but the mold remains unaffected and the next is parasitism what is parasitism idhila vand ayyo okay in this one organism is getting benefit and other is getting harmed okay example vand ipa parasite appadina adu vand or host depend pani da it should uh, it will live appo vand parasite ku vand benefit ena or uh, living host kedachidu appadina but host ku vand adu or harmful na because it spread many disease and also and the host ku harm Uh, parasite ko it is benefited the life cycle of parasites are often complex involving two or more intermediates host or vectors to facilitate parasitization of its primary host for example human liver fluke depends on two intermediate host to complete its life cycle majority of the harm parasites harm the host the harm is done in some ways like they reduce the survival of the host ipo vandu avanga host liye avanga thangi thanga appadina which is very much அவங்களோட லைஃப் ஸ்டைல் வந்து இட் வில் சேஞ்ச் ஹோஸ்டோட லைஃப் ஸ்டைல் ஸோ ரெடியூஸ் த சர்வைவல் growth and also reproductive ability of the host and it also reduces the population density they might render the host more vulnerable to predation by making it physically weak ide vandu parasites ay vandu it is of two types ectoparasites and endoparasites ecto abdina which lives outside the host or on the skin or on the back of the host but whereas endoparasite means which lives inside the host like intestines stomach like that and the last is mutualism mutualism abdina rendu perume vandu benefit aagranga rendu perume vandu benefit aagranga da it is an interaction that confers benefits to both the interacting species examples vandu lichens lichen vandu it is a combination of algae and fungi rendu perume vandu being benefited represent an intermediate mutualistic relationship between a fungus and a photosynthesizing algae or cyanobacteria hence here the fungus helps in absorption of nutrients and provides protection while algae prepares the food another example is the mycorrhiza shows a close mutual association between fungi and the roots of higher plants any doubts
Okay. We will start the next one, the ecosystem. Okay, what is exo ecosystem? It is a functional unit of nature and the term ecosystem was coined by A. J. Tansley in 1935. So, this ecosystem is considered as an interactive system where this abiotic and biotic components interact with each other via energy exchange. Biotic and abiotic factors, what is that? As I said, living and non-living. So, the interaction between them is caused by the exchange of energy and flow of nutrients and uh, we will see what are the types of ecosystem. The ecosystem is of two types, one is natural and artificial or man-made. Natural means they are capable of maintaining and operating themselves without interference of any man and whereas is artificial means these are maintained and manipulated by man for different purposes. Uh, example for na natural is divided into two that is terrestrial and aquatic. Terrestrial example it is forest, grassland, desert etc. But whereas in aquatic it is only marine and fresh water and fresh water means it is example river, stream or spring whereas lake, pond or swamp. Okay, we will see what are the components of ecosystem. There are two components that is abiotic and biotic. Abiotic includes like rain, light, wind, temperature and also soil, pH, mineral, topography and all. But whereas this biotic is of three types only that is producers, consumers and decomposers. Okay, what is producers, decomposers and uh, consumers? What is that? Okay, producers, all green plants, we call them as producers and uh, consumers means the animals which depend directly or indirectly on plants for food is known as consumers or otherwise known as heterotrophs. Decomposers means these are called as sporophytes or sorry, saprophytes or mineral mineralizers because they depend on de then decaying matter. And this consumers is of four types, primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary consumers. There are two important structural features for this ecosystem. One is species composition, another is stratification. Species composition means it is calculated by identification of plants and animal species in an ecosystem. But whereas stratification means it is a vertical distribution of different species occupying different levels in uh, ecosystem like example the trees occupy the highest level and where is the shrubs the second herbs means third and where is the grass it occupies the bottom layer okay we will see an example in pond ecosystem and uh, a pond water which is considered to be an abiotic component has all uh, inorganic and organic materials uh, deposited at the bottom and the solar input and the cycle of temperature, day length and southern climatic conditions regulate the rate of function of the entire pond. So here the consumers are zooplankton. Consumers means as I said they depend on food for, I mean they depend for food on plants uh, directly or indirectly. So here it is zooplankton which are free swelling, swimming and bottom dwellers. Fungi, these fungi are considered to be decomposers which are found in the bottom of the pond but where is the autotrophs autotroph means the plants which are present in the water it's considered considered to be producers or autotrophs convert inorganic material into organic material with the help of solar energy and the heterotrophs eat that and decomposes decompose and uh, mineralize the dead organic materials to release them back for use by the autotrophs Important function aspects of ecosystem, productivity, decomposition, energy flow and nutrient cycling. The first one is the productivity. Productivity means rate of synthesis of energy containing matter of biomass by a tropical level unit area in unit times and is expressed as in the terms of g to the power minus 2 and year to the power minus 1. And this productivity of is of two types, one is primary productivity, another is secondary productivity. 
primary productivity is the productivity of autotrophs whereas it involves the production of organic matter into inorganic matter whereas secondary it includes production of biomass by heterotrophs and involves the consumption of plants by heterotrophs to produce biomass and this primary productivity is of two one is gross primary productivity and net primary productivity gross gross primary productivity means it is a rate of production of organic material during photosynthesis so this is a difference between gross and primary sorry gross and net and whereas net primary means it is gpp minus r gpp means gross primary rate uh, gross primary productivity and where r is the re respiration losses next is decomposition the decomposition it is a process of breaking down of complex organic matter into inorganic substance like uh, water carbon dioxide and nutrients by decomposers there are three uh, there are uh, five steps in decomposition the first one includes the fragmentation fragmentation means they have been broken into smaller particles by the detrivores detrivores means these decomposes like earthworm these kind of things and the next is leaching what the uh, what happens is this water soluble inorganic nutrients will directly go into the soil as unavailable salts so that is known as leaching and the last is the and sorry and the next is the catabolism uh, bacterial fungal enzyme used to convert detritus to simple inorganic forms detritus means like example dead plant or uh, dead plants leaves and uh, flowers fecal matter etc and the next uh, process will be humidification accumulation of dark colored substance which uh, which is called as humus and uh, which is resistant to microbes action to undergo and the last is the mineralization it acts as a reservoir for minerals and humus degraded by some microbes and release inorganic substances and we we'll see what are the factors affects the decomposition the first is a co chemical composition of the detritus if the detritus is rich in lignin the decomposition will be of slow rate and also it will be fast when the detritus is made up of nitrogen and water soluble substances like sugar and climatic factor uh, it is very much favorable when there is warm environment and it is unfavorable during low temperature and anaerobic conditions and the next is the energy flow what is energy flow so except ocean or deep uh, sea water sun is the only source for energy and sun's radiation is less than 50% of it is photosynthetic active active radiation we call it as par photosynthetically active radiation so from this plant captures only 2 to 10 percentage of par so all the, it is very important to know how plant capture solar energy and flows it through other organisms in ecosystem so therefore all organisms depend upon produces directly or indirectly but the one there is one condition that is the flow of energy is unidirectional that is from sun to producers followed by consumers it doesn't happen in a vice versa condition uh, reaction and uh, there are three type of consumers as i said earlier primary secondary and tertiary consumers next is food chain food chain means what is food chain the transfer of energy from green plants through a sequence of organisms is known as food chain you can see the grasshoppers eating the grass and followed by rat is been eating this grasshopper followed by snake and this continues right so that is known as food chain and this food chain is of two types one is grazing food chain another is detritus food chains grazing food chain it is very simple and begins with the producers like uh, green plants who create the own food but whereas this detritus food chain starts with a starts with a decomposer only which is followed by some other organisms next is food chain 
food chain me oh sorry next is food web food web means it consists of many food chains so many food chain comprises a food web and the next is the standing crop standing crop means the amount of living biomass present in an ecosystem is known as standing crop and it is also a biotic component dry weight is preferred over fresh weight as the later is liable to be influenced by seasonal moisture differences and the next is a 10 percentage law we saw right the food chain that is from grasshop uh, from producers to consumers and consumers to uh, decomposers so there will be only 10 percentage of energy will be uh, transferred to the next level so all the uh, all the 90 percent will be lost due some reasons like uh, respiration trans okay we'll see the 10 percentage law for the transfer of energy from one tropic level to the next was introduced by raymond lindemann in the year 1942 According to this law during the transfer of energy from organic food from one tropic level to the next only about 10% of the energy from organic matter is stored as a flesh the remaining is been lost due to broken down in respiration or lost to incomplete digestion by higher tropic levels and the next is ecological pyramid so it is a graphical representation of tropic structure ecosystem in this the base will be the producers and the top will be occupied by the consumers and there are three type of pyramids we'll see what are the type of pyramids the first one is pyramid of numbers and pyramid of biomass and then pyramid of energy the next is ecological succession okay what is ecological succession any idea of ecological succession it is a process of change in the species structure of an ecological community over a time so that is referred to as ecological succession and this ecological succession is of two types one is primary another is secondary succession primary means it begins in the area where no living organisms existed before example uh, a bare rock newly formed pond or a reservoir uh like that and the process will be very slow since no organisms have been survived in earlier cases so it's very slow process but where is the secondary succession it begins where already a community is present was present but it's been destroyed due to some reasons maybe a abundant forest or a some something like that okay and this pro- this process is very fast because of what because already the species have been existed in before generation in this community and uh, what is plant succession and plant succession is of three types one is hydrosphere mesosphere and xerosphere hydrosphere means succession starts in regions where water is very plenty or much more examples ponds lakes streams swamps mesosphere means where the moist condition is very much adequate happens there and the next is the xerosphere it happens only the it happens where moisture is present in the minimal amount with water so we need moisture plus water and this xerosphere is of three lithosphere halosphere and samosphere lithosphere means initiating in a bare rock halosphere saline water that is extreme soil condition and the samosphere in the sand and the next is the nutrient cycle the movement of nutrient elements through various components of the ecosystem is called as nutrient cycling and also known as bio geochemical cycles and these cycles of four types sorry two types first is gaseous and another is sedimentary this gaseous is of two types that is a nitrogen cycle and carbon cycle whereas the sedimentary cycle is of two types one is oxygen another is phosphorus cycle we'll see about carbon cycle now <clears throat> so the carbon the cycling of carbon between abiotic and biotic system is called as carbon cycling and the main source of carbon is from carbon dioxide which is present in the air and water and organisms have 49 percentage of carbon in dry weight and globally 71 of carbon is dissolved in the oceans and fossil fuel is been 
represented as a reservoir for carbon reservoir means like a storage house and uh, estimated annually 4 into 10 to the power 13 kg of carbon is fused sorry is fixed in biosphere during photosynthesis human activation activities like uh, deforestation and then massive burn of forest also will increase the rate of carbon dioxide with just thus influencing the carbon cycling and the next is the phosphorus cycle phosphorus cycle in phosphorus cycle the reservoir for phosphorus is rock okay it is present in the rock only uh, in the form of phosphorus phosphate ions in the form of phosphate ions all these things are present in the uh, rock so when the rock becomes wet usually when it rains the rocks becomes wet right so that time the so it used to dissolve into the soil the rock used to dissolve in the soil and that soil has been absorbed by the roots of the plants which is shown in the diagram and the animals obtain phosphorus from eating those plants and then waste or dead organism decomposed by phosphate solubilizing bacteria releasing phosphorus and then no respiratory release of phosphorus is like carbon cycle so this phosphorus cycle is not harmful to human activities but whereas this carbon plays a major role in affecting our health and the last is the ecosystem services ecosystem services are the products of ecosystem processes that includes regulating regulating means keep on monitoring and maintaining them well that is air quality climate water erosion natural hazards and poly pollination etc and also we should support the nutrient cycle water cycling soil formation and photosynthesis and also cultural we have we should have some ethical values extensive values and then recreation and ecotourism and provisioning like food fiber biomass fresh water and natural medicines any doubt
Okay, and the next chapter what we're going to see is uh, biodiversity and its conservation. Okay, what is biodiversity? Diversity means variety. Bio means living variety. So, uh, it is also defined as the variety of life forms, gene pools and habitats found in a particular area. And the diversity is of three types. The first one is genetic and then species and ecosystem diversity. Genetic diversity is a range of different inherited traits within a species. In a species with high genetic diversity, there would be many individuals with variety of different traits. Like example, different breeds of dogs as a result of selective breeding. And the next is species breeding. Species, sorry, species diversity means number of species which is present in an ecosystem. And the next is the ecological diversity means a huge geographical location. That is diversity of a habitat in a given unit area. Magnitude of biodiversity. According to IUCN, that is International Unit for Conservation of Nature, they estimated that the number of the total number of plants and animals is greater than 1.5 million and they also estimated that the temperate country temperate country species inventory are complete comparing to tropical and they also said approximately 20 to 15 millions of species yet to be discovered and a scientist called as robert may he scientifically proved that the species diversity is of 7 million discovered and also he said fungi is of larger number comparing with fishes amphibians reptiles and mammals and the next is patterns of biodiversity there are two patterns the first one is lat latitudinal gradients and the next is species relationship we'll see them latitude gradient means the species diversity decreases away from the equator. If you go near equator, the species diversity will be less. If you come far from that, there will be variety of species diversity. Like example, Colombia has 1400 species. But when we compare New York, it is only 105 uh, species of birds. Because it is very much close to equator. And the country known as equator. 10 times species of vascular plants than in the Midwest USA. And uh, we know the well known forest, Amazon forest has a greater biodiversity of species and that is home for uh, more than 40,000 plants, 3,000 of fishes, 1,300 birds, etc. Okay, we will see why uh, reasons for rich biodiversity in the tropics. The first reason is the tropics are more having more stable climate and they also have a favorable conditions like warm temperatures and high humidity and no single species can dominate because everyone can have a opportunity to coexist and among plants rate of outcrossing appears to be higher in tropics. And the next is the species area relationship. This was given by a German naturalist and a geographer named as Alexander Vaughn. And uh, what he said in his uh, graph is like when area increases, the species amount also increases, but it stops in a particular limit. And he also obtained the rectangular hyperbola and the equation is as follows. That is log S is equals to log C plus Z log A. Whereas uh, S is the species richness, A is the area and Z is the slope of the line and C is the Y interceptor. And uh, importance of ecosystem species diversity. At a high species diversity indicates that organisms present are fairly even distributed among a large number of species. And species diversity usually indicates a high degree of functional diversity that is they have a capacity to carry out a wide array of processes and functional redundancy. This leads to ecosystem stability and uh, reliance. And then high biological diversity is an indicator of soil quality. 
and the next is loss of biodiversity what happens when there is no biodiversity or the biodiversity has been decreases decreasing this leads to the disappearance of many species and extinctions have been occurring constantly at low background rate usually matched by the rate at which new species appear resulting in an overall increase in the biodiversity <coughs> And these are the reasons for biodiversity loss. The first one will be the habitat loss. If the particular organism doesn't have place to live, it automatically leads to extinction of the organism. Invasive species. Invasive species means introduction of new alien species into the particular area. And over exploitations like uh, over harvesting or uh, too many, uh, what else, other, uh, too many, uh, which depletes the stock of some species while driving others to extension and then pollution too much contamination also leads to biodiversity loss and this climate also plays a major role like global warming so these are the influences which leads to biodiversity loss now let us see how to conserve these biodiversity biodiversity conservation means what is that is to protect and upliftment and scientific management of biodiversity so that it's maintained as its threshold level and derive sustainable benefits for the present and future generations we'll see what are the methods the first one is the narrow narrow utilitarian narrow utilitarian followed by broadly and then ethical argument narrow utilitarian means it provides economic benefits like uh, food firewood fiber industrial products etc and more than 25 percentage of drug is obtained from plants and 25000 plant species are of medicinal importance most nations are using bio prospecting bio prospecting means expo uh, exploring the molecular and genetic level of economic importance so nations will with more resources end up rich biodiversity and the next is a broadly utilitarian Broad, broadly utilitarian means provides major source services like photosynthesis and pollination we all know photosynthesis only initiate energy flow in the photo uh, in the ecosystem and amazon forests produce less than 20 percentage of world's oxygen and without pollinators and we don't get our food or fruit also and the last will be the ethical argument it is like uh, having some ethics to our to us and also it's our uh, responsibility to take care and also preserve and protect the earth's diversity and the next is the uh, approaches to conserve this biodiversity it is of two types in situ and ex situ say, conservation in situ includes biodiversity hotspots and protective areas biodiversity hotspots means like uh, where or we can preserve all these kind of extended animals and plants and there are 25 bio biodiversity hotspots but currently it is of 34 which covers less than 2 percentage of earth's land and strict production can protection can also reduce the extension by three and the three major hotspots in india include indo burma himalayas and western Ghats, and sri lanka these are the three biodiversity hotspots present in india and the uh, protected areas include bio reserve biosphere reserves national parks wildlife sanctuaries sa uh, scare uh, sacred groves and all these sacred groves are found in kasi and janita hills in megalia and uh, which serves as a home for large number of rare and threatened plants and uh, whereas wildlife sanctuaries it has been treated in a protect, protected forest area so those all protected areas comes under in situ conservation and the next is the ex situ conservation it is only for threatened species taken out from natural habitat and placed in a special area which includes like uh, zoo botanical garden wildlife safari feed bank gene bank etc and tissue culture has been using uh, has been spreading widely nowadays for the for uh, uh, plants which the gametes are in threat 
and species are preserved in viable and fertile condition using cryo preservation chryso uh, sorry chryso preservation areas any doubts Okay, in the next chapter what we're going to see is environmental issues. Since there is an increase in human population nowadays, the demand for water, food, home, electricity, road has also been increased. So therefore, this demand leads to pressure on, pressure on our natural resources like, uh, what are the natural resources like uh, air, water, yes, that leads to air pollution, water, soil and also noise pollution. Okay, we will see about pollution. What is pollution? It is an undesirable change in the physical, chemical or biological characters of land, air and water or soil and the, re and the, and the agents which cause these kind of pollutions are known as pollutants and the pollutants of two types. One is primary and secondary. Primary means it is directly released into the atmosphere and whereas secondary means it is a combination of primary and then comes out in the environment and examples for primary it is carbon monoxide and examples for uh, secondary it is 
HNO3, H2O2, H2SO4, etc. It goes on. And uh, on the basis of the degradation pollutants of two types, biodegradable and non-biodegradable. Biodegradable means they can be easily decomposed under natural condition itself. But whereas non-biodegradable, the degradation rate is very much slow or it does not happen at all. And whereas the ecological balance of nature is not disturbed in biodegradable, but whereas here the ecosystem has been disturbed. And biodegradable pollutants are made up of natural in ingredients and these are synthetic ingredients which are man-made. Examples for biodegradable pa paper and cow dung, whereas for non-biodegradable list plastic bags, metal cans, etc., metal cans. Based on the part of our environment that is polluted, pollution is of three, five types, air, water, soil, light and noise. Air pollution, what is air pollution? Any undesirable change in the physical, chemical or biological characteristics of air and it is caused, harmful effect caused by air pollution depend on concentration of the pollutant, how much it is concentrated and then how much of time it has been exposed to the pollutants and type of organisms it affects and air pollution is caused by two pollutants one is particulate and gaseous and see that is given as natural and human resource natural sources like uh, smoke that comes from wildfires or volcanoes human means it is uh, power plants and the smoke comes from the automobiles fumes burning wood stoves fireplaces and furnaces etc and so what happens when harmful air, air has been released in the atmosphere it affects everyone we will see what are the effects on plants uh, it damages the leaf and also limiting their nutrient uh, available to them and also exposing them to toxic substances slowly released from the soil they often injury or death of the plant is a result of the effect of acid rain in combination with one or more threats health effects of air pollution in humans it is premature death cancer chronic eye lung skin irritation and then also developing CADs premature births respiratory disease in breathing difficulties like asthma and also lung damage or stunted lung development how to control these type of air pollutions there are some two fundamental approaches the first one is like uh, one of the effective means of controlling is have a proper equipment in the place. This includes uh, devices for removal of pollutants from the fuel gases, those scrubbers, closed collection recovery systems through which it is possible to collect the pollutants before they escape. And also it providing a great height to the stacks can help in facilitating the discharge of pollutants as far away from the ground as possible. And industries should be located in places so it to minimize the effects in the pollution after considering the topography and the wind direction. Substitution of raw material that causes more pollution with those that cause less pollution can be done. And this is the electro precipitator. Principle of this is the particles in the polluted gas streams are charged by passing them through an electric field and these charged particles are led through a collector plate and since the collector plate contains the opposite charge of the on the particles, the particles are attracted to the collector plates and thus are removed from the gas stream. You can see in the picture and how it is constructed, it is charging electrodes are in, are in the form of thin wires are placed in the path of influent gas and the charging electrodes generate a strong electric field which charges the particles as they flow through it and the collector plate gets deposited with the particles and the particles are occasionally removed either by wrapping or washing the collector plates. And the next method is the scrubber. It is used to remove harmful gases like sulfur dioxide from the industrial exhaust. The exhaust is passed through a spray of lime or water and the water dissolves the gases as shown in the picture and the lime reacts with the sulfur dioxide to form a precipitate of calcium sulfate and sulfide. And the next is noise pollution. Any undesirable uh, high level of sound leads to noise pollution 
and it also disturbs our psychological as well as our physiological well-being and uh, also an act has been amended which included in the air prevention and control of pollution act itself and there are effects what are the consequences of noise pollution is permanent hearing loss high blood pressure insomnia and then stress permanent damage to the voice etc and how are these noises caused during tra traffic noise or aircraft or noise from construction works from industries or from horns or explosion and the next is the water pollution and any contamination in the water leads to water pollution this happens due to human activities in ponds rivers oceans and the government has also passed the water prevention and control of water pollution act in 1974 types of water pollution it is of two one is uh, anthropogenic that is created by humans or natural that is the river or uh, lakes have been contaminated by the solid domestic
by the following ways ground water can be replenished and recharged rain water harvesting it is a easiest and cheapest method of replenish and recharge ground water reducing the water demand and then efficient use of water planting more trees and appropriate town planning and uh, by sprinkle and subsurface irrigation techniques and the next is the soil pollution so any contamination in the soil leads to the soil pollution and the main sources includes fertilizers and pesticides from crop plants and soil wa waste from the industries and households and rains may wash down heavy and other toxic chemicals present in the solid waste and these are the ways to control them control of soil erosion and then proper dump dumping of unwanted materials proper hygiene condition public awareness and ban in toxic chemicals this this is solid waste it is referred to as that whatever goes into the trash we refer to as solid waste solid waste and the various solid waste are as follow, follows municipal solid waste industrial hospital electronic and defunct ships and how to how to dispose these solid waste first we can open burning involves burning of municipal waste in open dumps to reduce volume but the unburned piled waste most of the time serves as a breeding ground for rats and flies and then sanitary landfills are areas where all these uh, waste will be dumped 